Welcome back to Get Intentional with Mary, where each episode we dive deep into the art of living passionately and purposefully. Today, we're graced with the wisdom of Debbie, a luminary in the realm of women's wellness, whose journey in midwifery and as a doula has led her to explore the profound connection between women and their bodies. In this heartfelt conversation, Debbie guides us through the intuitive and sometimes overlooked ways women can connect with their inner magic. It's a reminder that embracing our uniqueness is vital in a world that often pushes us toward a one-size-fits-all approach. Together, we discuss the sacredness of the menstrual cycle, the transition into menopause, and the undervalued power of the womb. So whether you're looking to tune into your body signals or seeking solace during life's more challenging seasons, this episode has something for you. Lean in as we explore the significance of self-awareness through cycle tracking and how early education can empower women from a young age. From the mystery of the moon box to the tales of spirit babies, let's embark on a journey toward cultivating a delicious soul, as Debbie puts it, right here on Get Intentional with Mary. But before we do, go ahead and share this episode. Debbie, thank you for being here on Get Intentional with Mary. It's a pleasure to have you, and I'm really looking forward to not just learning what you do and how you help your clients, but also to educate myself a little bit with what you do and what you offer. Mm -hmm. So please tell everybody who you are and what you do. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Mary, for inviting me. And the mission that I have nowadays is don't leave your womb behind. Mm, I like that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's... um, Remembering that we have four centers. Right. We have our mental state, emotion, your gut feeling, which is your intuition, and our womb, which is our creativity. And the work that I've noticed, in, in my work, I've noticed women in a burnout state. Mm-hmm. Like everywhere you read about it is either overtired or exhausted or running as you're saying like Mm -hmm. unfolding in so many ways right like life unfolds and you're like what do I do now right and when we are disconnected from the fourth center the womb place the creativity life can becomes a burden Mm -hmm. and each one of us has a special and unique signature that brings us back into life, that brings fuel and the spark and passion and keep us alive. Otherwise, we just keep running around and doing things. And as your podcast is with intention, but sometimes the intention is just too much in our head and Mm -hmm. we just keep too much in our chit chat and overthinking. And there's so many thoughts and uh, things that we need to solve on a daily basis. Yeah. And our emotion side, our emotion center gets in, goes into panic attack Mm -hmm. or sadness or anguish because our third center, which is our intuition, is trying to communicate with us. Mm -hmm. But because we are just too much here, it's hard to listen to this third center. Right, right, right. And who pays the price Mm -hmm. is the heart. And then we feel we are not nourishing our womb connection that's when we can feel depleted Mm. so my work is to return like come back come back to yourself come back to this fourth center that it's been forgotten especially now in this Mm fast-paced society where is everything's a pill and we have a very great solution for to be even more disconnected, which is the birth control. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But let me ask you, how was it that you discovered all of this? How did you get started with that? Did something happen with you that awakened that inside of you? And you said, okay, I need to connect with myself. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that story. So my work, it started when I was 20 years old. I'm 37 now. And I come from a lineage, um, midwives of tradition in Brazil. So I grew up listening to birth stories and um, and that really, I, I had a, a very special place in my heart about women's wellness since like that early age. So when I was 20 years old, my sister-in-law became pregnant and I was studying physical therapy and she wanted to have a natural birth. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
where I come from, birth, uh, natural birth, it's uh, vaginal birth is not a thing. Like we have a high rate in cesareans in oh, Brazil. Wow, really? I don't know if you know this. No, I had no idea because cesareans are mostly because of high risk or emergencies. Not over there. Mm. <laughs> and so she, she, it's almost like a battle for you to have a vaginal wow. delivery because practitioners, they don't uh, incentivize or they just like want to choose schedule because it's so much easier to have your schedule controlled and you don't right. have to be it's waiting. It's more convenient, it's I, convenient. I imagine. Yeah. yeah. So she, she said, I, I really want to experience a vaginal birth. So at the time I was studying obstetrician and gynecology in, uh, at school and I talked to my professor and I said, hey, I need just to learn how to prepare her, like physically. Yeah. So I sat down with my brother and her and did a, my first childbirth education with them. And it's like, here's what the changes you're going to go through. Here's what's going to happen. Um, and she did. She had her vaginal delivery oh. with my first niece, mm -hmm. her firstborn. Were you there? Well, I wasn't. I couldn't because they didn't even know what a doula was at the oh, time. Okay. So it was just like her by, her, by herself. Mm -hmm. But a year and a half later, I was for her second child. Then I was already a doula. And, but at that time, I was in college, but I was also working in the, in the corporate world. I was in the role in marketing and sales. And right after college, I, re I received an offer to manage five schools. And I was like, yes, that's, that's very, you know, intrig intriguing. And also the income was going to be amazing. So I, I took the opportunity, but I, w I started questioning myself about my degree. I was like, okay, I really have this passion and I'm doing something that yeah, is not really fulfilled, aligned. Right? I wasn't fulfilled. Mm -hmm. I was curious to see how I was actually, how I was going to feel to be doing what I studied for it. Because I knew I wanted to, do, to become a physical therapy a therapist since I was 12. I... 15, 14 years old, I wanted a massage table. So I, my path wasn't anything like very um, dramatic that changed But it my involved life. healing. It, it, it was always evolving healing. Like there yeah. was always a calling, but I was just like, oh, in a little bit, I'll, I'll look at you. And, you know, I was mm -hmm. just like pressing snooze for a little while um, until I decided to do both at the same time. So I was working at the school and I was working now having, a, I, I built like a little room with a massage table and I started seeing clients and my first patient was like 6.30 a.m. And then working until like 11 p.m. So that's when I encountered burnout. Yes, of course. I was going to say those are <laughs> long hours. Yes, I mm. didn't, I, uh, honestly, Mary, I didn't know how to say no. I didn't know how to stop. I was always on the go. I was like doing volunteer work. I was teaching uh, childbirth classes. I was being a doula, a, a volunteer doula at the women's wellness clinic. Uh, you were everywhere. I was everywhere. And, and you were is, still young, but mm -hmm. that's a lot to handle. Yes. Like that was 23, yeah. 24. So I grew up very fast. Like I mat matured very, very fast. Um, so then I was like, no, I, I need to stop. And another factor is in Brazil, if you don't have a second language, mm. like fluently, you are out of, you know, you, you don't get, you don't have a good career. Not as many opportunities, huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I was very frustrated because I was working on a, at a language school and my English wasn't mm -hmm. at that level that I needed. So I faced this burnout moment and I was like you know what I'm gonna pause everything at the time I was thinking to start my master's in obstetrician and gynecology and studying pelvic floor dysfunctions like yeah. I'm gonna study that because that was something that I was like how in the world a woman can take care of everything and dealing with so many pains that Here's the thing. There are so many dysfunctions that happen yeah. with the pelvic floor and no one talks about it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, no, someone needs to take care of this, this issue. Yeah. 
Um, so I paused everything in 2012. I came to the United States, the United States to, with the goal to improve my English, mm -hmm. breathe, and come back. Okay. But then I didn't come back. You didn't go back. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't go back. I stayed. And that's when my work really unfolded and becoming a birth doula. I was a birth doula already, but mm -hmm. here it was when I really was hands-on and having clients and working on, tri on a tri-state area. I had Brazilian clients. I was working with the Brazilian community at first and then um, mm -hmm. working. It was probably more well-received and more women want that. Yes. So flourished yeah. in a very beautiful way. Um, but I, I started noticing, Mary, that... When I was working with a woman during postpartum, postnatal, uh, she then, we received her menstrual cycle afterwards and she didn't know exactly, I don't want to go on birth control, but I don't know what to do. Or reinventing herself like, okay, now I ha I'm a mom right. and I don't want to go back to work. You develop a new identity. Yeah, it's, it's more... Yes. Yeah. So my work started shaping mm -hmm. into this coaching and helping and guiding them to go back to the source, to the womb. And th then, you know, going from birth, being at a birth, um, at a birth with a woman and then postnatal, I noticed that we need to go back. Like, so how's this fertility? How's your fertility, the relationship with your fertility and with your sexuality? Because sometimes you decide, sometimes, some, in some cases, mm -hmm. some people decide to become a parent based on, I want to be a mom because someone needs to take care of me when I'm older. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you ever, I, that's yeah. stuff that I, I hear. You probably heard that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or I need to become a parent because everybody else in my group, in my social group is having, all my friends are having babies. I don't, okay. FOMO. Mm -hmm. I need to have a baby because of the pressure. Like I already had my degree. I'm married mm -hmm. for yes. a long time coming now. Coming from, from not a good place when it comes to planning that baby yes. and then yeah. when they cross that bridge they come into a very hard reality like whoa this is very hard this wasn't what i had in mind and that's a, a, a very shocking reality so also shaping this um the root why do you want to have this baby yeah it's from the hard place or is from a thinking place yes The logical thing. Mm -hmm. um, so today I teach women how to sync their life with their menstrual cycle. So it's a very educational and mm -hmm. I guide them to read their um, the phases of a menstrual cycle. Right. In this way, you, ha you, you are able to read your, your inner compass. Mm -hmm. It's like your GPS. Well, let's talk about that. Let's talk mm -hmm. about because for some women, of course, they know that the time is coming and mm -hmm. they feel a certain way, more irritable or maybe sad mm -hmm. and bluesy. And like you said, a lot of women are on birth control. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot, too, that goes with that that I want to talk to you about because some women have to be on certain types of pills to deal with the pain that mm -hmm. comes with their menstrual cycle. Because there are things that you try sometimes naturally and that you're still rolled, doubled up in pain. That, mm -hmm. that was my issue mm -hmm. when I was younger. I had a minoria, so it was extremely painful. And there were times I couldn't even get out of bed the mm -hmm. first day or so. And now I see it happening with my daughter. So with her, I had to get her on progestin pills mm -hmm. like we did with me because I can't take estrogen because of the... Um, cancer, breast cancer risk. Mm -hmm. So she couldn't get on that either. So now I have her on progestin, very light dose progestin pills. She hasn't gotten a period since she started. You know, mm -hmm. I think it, I think it took three, three months or so for it to kick in. How old is she now? She's going to be 19 soon. And when was her first? Uh, I believe it was 14. 
Mm-hmm. So for all those years, and then she was going away to college. She's like, mommy, how am I going to deal? So it would mm-hmm. give her severe anxiety mm-hmm. and the pain was just so bad to wake her up at night. So all of these little things. And I know that uh, having the healthy lifestyle, which she did, mm-hmm. controlling stress level. She has a life coach for a mom, mm-hmm. you know, so we work a lot on that. Exercising, mm-hmm. which she absolutely loved. So she had everything mm-hmm. in a row. Mm -hmm. The calming teas, you know, the heating pad. Mm -hmm. There was also the electro thing that you put on the belly. Mm -hmm. None of that worked for her Mm -hmm. as much as we wanted to. So my last resort was to say, okay, let's try this route. Mm -hmm. And it still took two to three months, I would say, for her to finally be Mm -hmm. pain free. Mm -hmm. So what has been your experience Mm -hmm. with dealing? Because I know that there are other friends that I have who are maybe in the same situation with their kids or they might be dealing with it too. And of course, we want to go the most natural way possible and have all the things aligned. But tell us about that. Like, what's your experience? Thank you for sharing uh, this personal. Um, To me, I grew up in a very allopathic family. So mm, for any headache or I I had my first dose of antibiotics when I was seven days years years old like yeah. very young and every year I'll take antibiotic for a sore throat um until 2017 I was introduced to homeopathy so that's h- how I help yeah. my clients with homeopathy remedies and my last like one of my uh, major cases was this lady with endometriosis yeah. she would be in pain every month just like you're saying one or two days yeah. debilitating pain and we started doing the the work of learning the four phases uh, and working with essential oils and homeopathy on, on the third month she passed like a very big clog yeah and she she almost felt like am i this is a miscarriage because it was like right. big yeah so she texts me saying, like, I can't believe I didn't have to take the, the pain medication. Oh, wow. I, she, it was very, mm-hmm. like, surprising. It's so, like, the, the feeling of not having the pain was almost, like, yes, like foreign. Like, you're expecting it yes. because you did so used to it. Yeah. The pain. So on the fourth month, she goes, I am good. Let's focus now on PMS because I'm still iterable. So let's yeah. focus on on this. And at that session, I mentioned to her I said hey um I have a, a spiritual message for you would you like to receive yeah it was a spirit baby coming for the family uh she wanted to have babies she had she already had two mm-hmm. but she had to go through a procedure like first okay. she had to remove the scar tissue mm-hmm. to conceive a lot of women yeah go through so much to have a baby too yes. yeah the second she had it in vitro she was uh, but I don't want to go through the, the whole process again. I said, well, there's a baby knocking at the door. Mm-hmm. Okay. I just hear, I, I'm just delivering a message. Yeah. Three weeks later, they were pregnant. Wow. It's amazing. And here, you know, uh, my point is, um, we, I do a somatic work, right? So w- what does that mean is, the body is the last source that when we manifest our pain, discomfort, the womb is a very, it's a place where we hold transgenerational pain. Mm. So our own pains, we can somatize uh, yeah. on, the, on the womb, but also from our ancestors. So whatever pain our mother, mm-hmm. our grandmother suffered, the silence that they had to go through, whatever the case may be, yeah. we can mm-hmm. ha- hold in our wombs. So the work we do, it's meditation and affirmations and the oils, herbs, and homeopathy. So the trifecta yeah. effect to help bringing the consciousness to this, to this work, to, to this place. Yeah. And like from a simple, it's, it, it, it sounds simple, Mm-hmm. And some people like can be very uh, skeptical about it. Well, let me just say something about that mm-hmm. because have you heard of epigenetics? 
So mm -hmm. there's actually now science that backs all of this up. Yeah. And a lot of the trauma is passed on genetically and mm -hmm. a lot of people just didn't realize it. Mm -hmm. But then other people do understand intuition, do understand mm -hmm. generational trauma at a different level. And whether you locate it in the heart or in the womb, you know, there are people mm -hmm. who are more connected spiritually who understand that. Mm -hmm. Something that science is just now figuring out. Yeah. So I definitely believe in that. And there are, of course, ways to get past it through healing and all mm -hmm. the different modalities. So I love that you're doing that kind of work because as women, we go, 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 go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some of us know when to stop and when to calm ourselves mm -hmm. down, come back to our center so that we can continue to go again because yes. we're building businesses, we mm -hmm. have a family, we do a lot. But there are women who just don't know how to stop and don't really understand mm -hmm. that a lot of what they're feeling is based on their cycle mm -hmm. also. Yes. And knowing how to operate from that place is crucial. Mm -hmm. And you have to bring it back to a healthy way of operating. So thank you for sharing all of that. Mm -hmm. So like shed a little bit more light on how it is that mm -hmm. you work with these ladies and talk about also maybe the homeopathic mm -hmm. tools that you use mm -hmm. so that people who are listening can be like, oh, you know what, mm -hmm. this is something that maybe I never thought about. Let's look into that a little bit more. Yeah, so I offer a complimentary consultation mm -hmm. so you can talk and bring what you're experiencing and then I'll explain. Mm -hmm. So it's a free consultation. Um, and after that, we go on deeper uh, deeper session where you're going to bring your history yeah. where is everything's mm -hmm. coming from and then I'll do a abdominal and womb massage that's the first initiatory um, session after we do sessions and then I'm going to walk you through the a more in-depth explaining how to read the signs of your menstrual cycle and what does it mean each one of them, mm -hmm. nutritional facts and what to eat, what to avoid, what type of um, self-care tips that you can implement in your daily life. Right. Uh, it, because it's very specific, Mary. Yeah. It's not a work. It's not mm -hmm. like a, um, you Everybody know. Everybody's different. So Every woman different. is different. So yeah. I can't give you like, it's mm -hmm. A, B, C that equals C. This is a work that it's a self-discovery. And I like to compare sometimes as like um, learning a new language. So you're, you're going to develop and you're going to start translating your body yeah. signs until you become fluent into your in your body. Like, oh. That's how I operate. So I use a method called Mundala. So wow. we sync yeah. your menstrual cycle mm -hmm. with the phases of the moon. And by the way, today is our second full moon of the month. And when we hear once in a blue, blue moon, it's today. It's today. It's today. Oh, so what does that mean? Explain, please, because um, I don't understand any of that. <laughs> so every month we have one full moon. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in 2015... We had this two full moons in a month. Okay. So it's a it's a huge cos um cosmic event. So it's very a powerful energy, and this one in specific is is in Pisces. So everything is more intense. So for example, um, the new moon is a, a it's a moon where you're feeling more inward. Your energy is more introspected. It's a good moon for you to set up your intentions. Okay. So this is backed up on ancient history. Mm -hmm. And because the moon is Earth's satellite and impact the water, like you, there's yeah, science the tides, behind, yes, the tides, course. high and low, mm -hmm. new moon. That's it's, why more babies are born, they say, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I also have a, a, a little, my own yeah. uh, knowledge on this mm -hmm. one. Like I count 10 moons from conception. So oh, you yeah. see, um, if you know when the conception day was, yeah. I count 10 of the same moon, not specifically the full moon. Okay. You count the same moon. So we have four moons, uh, four phases of the moon and four phases of the menstrual cycle. Right. So your bleeding time is your new moon. Okay. Your pre-ovulation is the first quarter of the moon. But that doesn't necessarily coincide with the actual. Not necessarily. Okay. But that's how Yes, do. that's okay. how we do the correlation. Okay. Your ovulation time is the full moon. 
and your last quarter of the moon is your uh, premenstrual cycle. Okay. Okay. Um, the premenstrual cycle is one of the cycle, one of the phases more, more challenging for a lot of women, because it's a, it's a time where everything, it's falling to the ground, right? It's also a very introspective energy. So if we can also, we can also correlate the four phases of the menstrual cycle with the four, se uh, four seasons. Okay. So bleeding time, winter. Pre-ovulation is your spring. Ovulation, summertime. And pre-menstrual is your autumn, your fall time. Okay. So each phase has an invitation. So when you're bleeding... You are more in tune. You are receiving downloads. Mm. If you are connected with your blood, you are receiving your downloads. And if you are not off birth control, that blood is so rich in nutrients. Because it, just imagine that blood that it's coming out was supposed to transform and, and nur right. nurture a baby, right? A human. Yeah. So it's very rich in potassium, sodium, and phosphorus. This is the the first moment and their archetype is the crone so it's that woman the wise woman talking mm. to you right okay. the first moment mm -hmm. the second moment the pre-ovulation we are coming out of the winter time we are going to spring you are more social it's a time where you can perhaps set up your meetings you want to maybe see friends that time you're like oh i feel alive Yeah, more energetic. More yeah. energized, which is spring, spring energy. And then ovulation is the mother energy, which you are in the full summer. You feel good about yourself. You look yourself in the mirror like, mm, I like what I see yeah. here. Like, mm. Your skin comes to life, you know, the sun. Just your loves lips your skin, become softer. Mm. There are other signs like your, uh, your scent, your odor changes because now you're in a procreation time yeah, procreation mode so <laughs> Procre yes. you start feeling a certain way you mm -hmm. want certain things to happen of your course. libido is high mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. all the, the the sex appeal is in the house and and then after everything drops every now the invite is come back to yourself mm -hmm. look what it needs to be sorted out And you have a little more energy of um, discernment. However, we have a tendency. We don't want the summer to end, right? Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people, oh, I want the summer to stay forever. Yes. I don't want to deal with the fall. Like, don't even tell me that it's fall coming. Yep. That's right. right. So that's why the resistance. Mm -hmm. We don't want the, the good hormones to live us. We want to stay in that level. But every time we are resisting, that's when suffering, when... PMS becomes horrible and irritable. Like, oh, I don't want to feel this way. Mm -hmm. So you're against your nature. Okay. Every time I go against my nature, I suffer. Mm -hmm. So my experience has been, of course, because of my schedule, I feel good. I'm doing all the things. And then all of a sudden you experience that really like dr that drop. Mm -hmm. But you're still wanting to continue yes. with everything. On so I highway. can totally, yeah, I can see that and I can see how frustrating it can be sometimes mm -hmm. because we're going against that mm -hmm. and that's why more and more I'm seeing some women doing the workouts based on their cycle being more creative depending on where they are during that time of the month but sometimes it's not easy for women to be able to do that when they have to work a full-time job yeah. when they still have to take care of the kids And it's hard being a woman. You know, mm -hmm. you have maybe two good weeks where you're like, yay, everything feels good. And then all of a sudden you go through this up and down mm -hmm. hormonally and the energy. So what would you say to those women who are like, yeah, you know, I, I want I want that to continue. Now, how do I deal with all the other things that I still have to do with the lower energy? That's my work is to changing that mindset and accepting, mm -hmm. accepting your nature. Because now goes back to where everything started, why we are where we are. Yeah. Back in the 60s, they gave us a solution. Here's take, take the pill, forget about your womb, just put everything in this new, is news, and you're going to wake your womb when it's time for it, for you to think about 
mm. babies. Yeah. So we are we we are not being connected with the seasons. Mm. We are just like on demand, on demand, like go go go. Uh, the potential of PMS phase it's so powerful to harness because when you are not resisting, that's the energy. The, the energy that comes is your intuition. Is the discernment like you were more in tune when you were just not fighting that wants to be in your high and respecting? Okay, I'm feeling feeling tired, and I'm gonna take a nap. Mm -hmm. Or no, I can't because I have a nine to five. But be mindfulness that you are not in your optimal phase. Just the fact that you be, bring that into awareness right, right. that it's that a phase that you are not optimal mm -hmm. already changes the fact mm -hmm. that if you have a, a meeting and, and your performance it's not. Like the the week before, and now if you are mapping, you know that your day twenty two of your menstrual cycle it's not the same as day ten. Right, right, right. So it's like a weather, like mm -hmm. a forecast. Yeah. You know, there's a probability you bring your umbrella. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. And I think <laughs> it's important to know these things. I, I I'm fine with naps. I take mm -hmm. naps. I know when I can perform really well, and if I'm feeling a certain way, I'll get a couple of things done. Like okay. Everything else can wait mm -hmm. because I need my rest mm -hmm. because I also do a lot of high impact, high demand physical work yeah. and that drains me and pushing myself causes nothing but burnout and I already know what it's like, mm -hmm. but I've never been that in tune where, for example, I know the feeling, I'm aware of the feeling, I go to sleep and then before you know it, I get my, my period and then I look at the phone and I'm like, oh. It was today. Like it's it's mm -hmm. tracked on the calendar, mm -hmm. but I'm not tracking it intentionally. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not looking at it. I mm -hmm. just go by what I feel. Mm -hmm. But I think just being aware of that yes. and looking at the calendar and making note of it and saying, okay, you know what? This next week is going to be interesting. Yes. So I need to prepare for that. I mm -hmm. need to figure out what things I can do. Maybe I can move certain things around or maybe just really baby myself a little bit more. Yes. You know, so that's important to know. Absolutely. And, and see, it's simple. And this work is so simple, but sometimes we also want to like, oh, make things overthinking or, or complicated. But the the, um, the self-care can be as simple as leaving a bottle of castor oil, castor oil in your next to your nightstand and massage your womb every night for five minutes or okay. two minutes. Mm -hmm. That's it. And putting a heating pad. We want to keep our womb warm. Warm, yeah. That's crucial as well. Even in the summertime, mm -hmm. you know, like being in a barefoot can make our womb cold. Yeah. And that can increase cramps. Mm -hmm. um, you don't want to eat cold stuff when you're bleeding. Mm -hmm. You also want to make everything nice and warm. Yes. So there are specific, like, small uh, switch that you can improve. And as you were saying, like every woman that I talk to, they have the day prior to their period, they they feel something. Oh, like, yeah. I get so sleepy and I just, in the morning, I don't want to get up. And I just, yeah, I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. it's coming. Well, I, I just sleep. So, I'm the opposite. Yeah, you, you get energetic. I get so, <laughs> I look forward for yeah. my day one and two mm -hmm. of my period. Uh, so mine is more physical sign nowadays. My throat hurts because my throat... It's my weakness where when I'm stressed out or when there's body change, it's my first mm. thing. Like, it's my throat. And for some reason, my pee burns after. Mm -hmm. Just like once. Once a day, like, I finish pee. There's a little burning. The next so day, my... hypersensitive. Yeah. yeah so, mm -hmm. I, I start pinpointing. Yeah. And that's when you have your manual of instructions. Now you have... So, when... We, you do this work mapping your menstrual cycle day by day. It takes from two to five minutes, not even. Um, so it's a imagine like a circular big pizza yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> chart yeah. with 20 and 28 days. Okay. And then you're going to write it down mm -hmm. each day. And some of my clients, they use uh, color co coding. Okay, that's, that's So they nice. can say, Visually. visualize, mm -hmm, yeah. like, okay, today I'm feeling uh, my libido is high, so I'll, I'll choose red to mm -hmm. identify. Or you can customize, like, I'll put a little bit of red, a blue, because I was sad too. But, you know, yeah. so you can start 
stealing yourself. Right. And some of my clients, they even bring the chart to the doctors, to their physician, because now, oh, here, that's what I'm feeling. I have headaches three times this month. And, or within three months, I had zero headache after changing yeah, those habits, things. incorporating habits. Yeah. And I don't like to say like, oh, let's set up a challenge and do this work. I not a fan to call this like a challenge. I like to say like a new habit, get to know yourself, yes. do a inner work, your inner landscaping and remember that you are nature and imagine your womb. If your womb has a potential to grow a baby, isn't perhaps your womb like a garden? Of course. Yeah. And I imagine the earlier you start with this, the better. If I imagine, oh, yes, yeah, yes, because as, yes. if, for example, if my daughter got started now, by the time that she's ready to get married yeah. and have babies, like she'll be so much more in tune. That's why my body. work came back yeah. to like, let's not wait until they are pregnant or postnatal. Let's work on conception phase or even you started earlier. Yeah. So today I developed my first moon box, mm -hmm. which is a celebratory gift box for caregivers that like to gift the girls in yes. their lives with something meaningful. Um, this is inspired on what I did for my nieces. So I wrote a love letter on a journal and myself, her, her mom, aunts, grandma, great grandma. So she knew she was going to receive a, a journal with love letters. Wow. So she was looking forward to it. Uh, and then after that came the box. And at the end of this month, I'm teaching this class, the how to map your menstrual cycle for young girls, like 10, 11 years old. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. And I can definitely think of at least one young girl that I mm -hmm. know who just started. Mm -hmm. And this would be a wonderful way for her to, you know, get on that path the mm -hmm. right way. Self-love. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and not neglecting. This work is like do not neglect. Don't leave your womb behind. Yes. I love <laughs> that. You should trademark that. Yeah, I think it needs to be trademarked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And embracing, embracing our nature. We are gardens. Yes. We are flowers. And once we don't resist, especially the winter and the fall that we mm -hmm. go through, and use that time as uh, taking inventory, yeah, emotional inventory of yourself. What, what is this time is trying to tell me? What am I, what is it time to let go? What is the fall? Right? PMS, yes. if PMS is the fall, what do I need to let go? What am I carrying? What, why am I so angry? Mm -hmm. What is this, this angry trying to tell me? And some women get really sad too, like really depressed during that time. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when everything else seems to be going okay, like, and it happened to me a few years ago where I thought, what is happening? I have logically, it made no sense mm -hmm. to me, but I still felt that way. Mm -hmm. And it was debilitating. I still had to go and, and do what I needed to do. And I would ask myself, okay, because I'm very self-aware and I know what bothers me and I know how to deal with certain things pretty well, but I couldn't deal with that. Like, what is happening? Do you feel like everything was gray? Oh, everything. Like, I was crying no on the way to class. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I would just cry for no reason. Mm -hmm. And it was like a very sad, like, uh, almost despair type mm -hmm. of sadness mm -hmm. and I remember talking to my best friend about it and she said well you know she's already post uh, uh, menopausal so she had to get on a low dose antidepressant mm -hmm. because again the lifestyle is we do all the things mm -hmm. right that we think mm -hmm. are necessary the self-care the taking time for yourself the eating well, the exercising, the meditation, the journaling, mm -hmm. all of that. And here I am a life coach thinking, what is wrong? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I had no explanation for it. So I did end up getting on the low dose antidepressant. And after a month or so, it was fine because even though I would get PMS, that was a little bit, you know, I could deal with it. It was, it was mm -hmm. fine. I'm like, I know why I feel this way. Mm -hmm. But then it got so bad that mm -hmm. I had like no real reason. I was having some really wacky thoughts. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that to me was like, oh, heck no. There's mm -hmm. no way if I need to get on something. Like, what am I doing here? No what is the yes. purpose of exactly. all of this? Like, why do I need to get up and do all everything exactly. that I'm doing? Yeah. So I said, you know what? I'm not going to be a hero here. I'm just going to go and do what I need to do because mm -hmm. I need Take me. Take the edge People off. around me need me. Mm -hmm. and that's what I did. But I, I, 
only did it for a couple of years and now mm-hmm. I'm fine. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and again, you know, the essential oils, I have all the stuff. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, then the infusions and all the teas and the, you know, the blankets. So there are times when some of us are doing the right things and then chemically, that chemical imbalance, whether mm-hmm. it's because now we're getting older and the hormones begin mm-hmm. to shift a little bit mm-hmm. more drastically. So I just want to say for those women who are out yes. there who are like, okay, I'm doing all the right things too and I need this. So I don't want them to feel that. Every medicine yes. is sacred. Mm-hmm. Every me- medicine is sacred. And I honor yeah. not, you know, all of, all of, all of them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I believe that there are seasons in our lives and some seasons are in the sadness and we don't want to feel that way or we don't want to have those thoughts like, oh, why am I thinking this, right? But also understand that we are not the thoughts and and the alignment of the four centers when there's like too many thoughts coming, being able to look at them, observe them, looking them in the face and like, okay, I see you, but I'm not you. Let me come down to my second center. Let me check in with my heart. Then let me check in with my, with intuition and then going down to my fourth center with, which is my expression. What can I do? Because then in the sadness, sometimes sadness can come with chaos. Yeah. And then like, because you're, don't have motivation like I don't even want to organize anything and then you pile things up either in your house or like there's just no motivation right and then you have to get messy into that mm-hmm. chaos and when you go down and not afraid to be in the dark and look into the dark and express yourself in your own way in your creative way that is unique to you that can be painting can be dancing when it will overcome those thoughts and find the outlet into creativity, you're dancing. I know you, yes. you have, you know, this mm-hmm. expression of the body and moving. We are able to find and pass through and overcome, not overcome, but more like passing through. Let's just go back to water, mm. earth satellite, which is the moon. We are water. We are 100% water. Every cell is made of water. So if I'm feeling sad, depressed, and a low vibrational, imagine I'm feeling stagnated. I'm piling things up into the the bottom. What what happens if water is not agitated or there's Mm -hmm. residual in the bottom? And remember, you're water. What do I need to do to move? And creativity is our medicine. Right. Creative life mm-hmm. is medicine. Yeah. And there's a book, if you allow me to yes, share. Yes, of course. Please. For if, you know, if you're doing everything, you already have a holistic lifestyle, you're, but you like, you don't know, like, there's just something missing. A book that I recommend is Women Who Ran With the Wolves by Clarissa Pinkolistis. Oh, wow. Okay. It's, she talks about women's psyche mm-hmm. in all the seasons that a woman go through life. Yeah. And when we lost ourselves, that we have to sing over our bones when we feel like there's nothing left. Yeah. And finding that strength to sing over your bone to create a new flesh new bones to come over again where is the spark where is my passion yeah i love that yes mm. absolutely i'm gonna have to look into that book yeah and soon i'm, I'm gonna start a you mentioned um, the book, book club, club. So yes please talk about that yeah so this is you're gonna find at uh, florida vida uh website floridavidawellness.com uh i'm updating some new information and soon I will be launching. It's a, a reading. Um, so we have three chapters that we read together and discuss because it's a very dense book. Yeah. And I like to take time to read. So we're not going to rush into anything. Sometimes you read one line and you're like, wait, what did you just Like, <laughs> it's very profound. Um, and di- dissecting the this mysterious part 
of being a woman. Like sometimes we want things very logical, as you were saying before, like A plus B, I'm doing everything, right. but I'm not getting the results that I wanted. What am I doing wrong? What's wrong with me? Yeah. There's nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. We are magical beings and intuitive beings. And sometimes uh, well, everything's just norm dormant and we need to awaken mm -hmm. different ways and not in a so common ways that everybody's telling you to do. Do this, do that. Because there's more than one way to do things and yeah. there's more than one modality. And really tapping into that deeper self is important. Mm -hmm. Got to get like you said, out of our heads and more into our center. And that's where I think women really excel. You know, we really have that much deeper connection with ourselves than males do. True. So yeah. it makes us such amazing beings. Mm -hmm. And when we have other women around us who are also tapping into that, I think it's a beautiful thing because mm -hmm. we know that we're never alone and we know that there's more to what we are feeling and somebody's mm -hmm. always going to say you know what have you thought about it this way have you just felt your way through it and I and think not compare that, yeah not mm -hmm. not compare yourself to anyone anyone right. you have a specific way to see life with your own lenses lenses with your own body constitution um we are not the same and we are not the same person every day we are different oh, yes I mean, we are women after all, right? <laughs> yes. Every day is different. Yeah. So remembering mm -hmm. that we are water, we are gardens that needs care and love and nourishment. And after all, we are here to experience this, this human experience. We are a spiritual being, a spiritual beings living a human experience. Mm -hmm. That's right. So when does your book club start? Uh, it's going to start at the end of October. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's plenty of time from this yeah. recording for people to go to floridavidawellness.com mm -hmm. and check out the book club. And how long does it go for? Six months. Six months. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's yeah. a nice chunk of time yeah. to really get deep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not only that, but then I imagine the relationship with the rest of the yeah, ladies. Yeah, it's so, is... such a great mm -hmm. energy and community and the exchanging and just feeling supported and like, oh, wow, someone else is going through yeah. similar mm -hmm. situation. And it just give that not that we need external validation, right? We don't need someone telling us, oh, you're in the right path. But sometimes it's good to hear just like, ah. It gives it a little relatable. Yes. How often would the book club meet? Is it once a week? Once a uh, month? Once a month. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Great. Thank you for Thank sharing you. that. Is there anything else that you have coming up maybe besides the book club or next year that you're super excited about that you might want to share? I am super excited about our meet and greet at Florida Vita. So we're having all the practitioners that work there. So it's yeah. gonna be, it's a chance for the community to come and meet all of us and see, you know, what we offer and yeah. how we can guide you th through this self-discovery. Mm -hmm. We're just like keepers. Mm -hmm. We don't have the answer for you. We are just holding together. Mm -hmm. And as you're saying, showing different modalities and see what calls to your soul at this season in your life. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. And like anything else, you have to be open yeah. to learning mm -hmm. and not shutting the door on something that maybe you never heard about before. Because, of course, if we're too much in our heads, we're like, oh, you know, this is a little weird for me. But no, you know that somebody gets put in your path for a reason mm -hmm. and every relationship brings something special. Yeah. And if that relationship brings a new way of learning and a new way of healing mm -hmm. and it opens you up to so many different possibilities. And at the end of the day, we want to live well. We want to feel good and we want to make sure that we're doing everything with intention. And I think that's the intentionality behind it is just being open, open hearted yeah. and open minded. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah right? That's the delicious. So I say my lifestyle, like, just live a delicious soul. What delicious brings like, soul. Mm, the yum. And uh, what was what you said before? Don't leave your womb Don't behind. Don't move. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't leave your womb behind. Live your delicious souls. Uh, so and remember that you are garden. Yes, mm -hmm. I love the garden. I remember when I was going through hypnobirthing coaching because mm. that's what I wanted to do with my daughter. The thought was 
pretend that your womb is like a flower, mm-hmm. you know, you're like breathing through the flower and everything. And, and it's true. We are capable of creating life, holding life inside of us and everything. We know that everything is connected mm-hmm. and we pass all of these things on to the next generation, knowingly or unknowingly, all mm-hmm. our traumas, everything. So it's important to take a step back and to begin to think about that and say, okay, well, I, I wonder what about that is showing up now mm-hmm. that is causing me to feel this way. Yeah. So it's it's a deeper level of thinking and feeling. So I appreciate you being here and sharing Thank all of you. that. And Thank hopefully you. those who are listening will have a different way of thinking now and <laughs> saying, hmm, I should go pop into Montclair and you will find all the show notes and all the links to Debbie's website on the podcast episode so thank you so much mary i really appreciate your willingness to hear what i have to share my my medicine thank you oh yeah i was definitely intrigued (laughs) and i'm always happy to learn and Mm -hmm. to connect a little bit deeper with myself we never stop learning i'm i'm 49 now i can't believe i'm saying i'm 49 so for me to start learning about this that's why i'm saying the earlier the Mm -hmm. better Yes. Yeah, we have and that. there's always time. Oh, yeah. There's always time. It's never too late, whether you've gone through menopause or approaching. Connect with yourself and just... Yeah, Don't be afraid of menopause. Yeah. Menopause can also be very powerful because mm-hmm. menopause is just like a pause. Now you're just not bleeding, but the energy, the same energy from bleeding time, when you receive those downloads, now it's internalized. So your menopause is just the sum of like, the compounded ways that you treat your womb, now it's going to reflect on menopause. Mm. And what would you say about hot flashes and all that? Again, there's always, there's something, teas, herbs, um, the bioidentical hormones to help you. Yeah, mm-hmm. We have the wise woman tea made by Shanti. She's one of our, my colleagues, uh, my colleague that work with, um, herb medicine. Okay. Do mm-hmm. you have that information on your website also? Yes, we do. Okay. We do. Wonderful. So mm-hmm. this way I can refer to that also mm-hmm. in the podcast show notes, because I do know a lot of women who are going through that and mm-hmm. they're very uncomfortable. Yes. So yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. And menopause, um, you can still do the same work and checking with the phases of the moon the same way. Mm-hmm. So now you're going to connect put your intentions with the new moon and then you can meditate in at the full moon and put your intentions and and see how how the energy affects your body yeah Mm -hmm. wonderful thank you for sharing that i'm glad i asked all right debbie thank you for being here and i look forward to more conversations with you thank you so much I always really find fascinating how other women perceive life and perceive their cycles. And some women are much more intuitive than others. That was fascinating to me. What did you think? What did you learn today during this episode? Please be sure to leave a comment or forward this episode to a friend. Educate the young girls in your community on what it means to have a healthy cycle. And be sure to follow Debbie at Flor Davida on Instagram, and you'll see that all of her information is in the show notes. Once again, thank you for being here on Get Intentional with Mary. See you soon.